Welcome back to Clash of Cultures. As you guys can see by that title, we're going to be recapping the Florida State versus LSU game. Also, as you guys can see, my dad is not here today. Uh, Sterling's filling in for us. Um, he's been on the channel multiple times uh, doing the NBA videos, the hip-hop videos. So um, he's a recurring viewer as well as a participant here on the channel on the podcast. Um, so it's good to have him back. But before we get into too much of the talk, um, as always, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let us know your takes down below. Um, but just to get right into it, I just want to say something really quick. LSU fans, I was right. Um, I told you guys from the jump, I trusted Jordan Travis a little bit more than I trusted Jaden Daniels. He showed that for me today. Um, the transfer portal edition and Keon Coleman was massive. Jaheim Bell was massive with that last touchdown that he just scored. So um, I'm going to kind of kick the floor to you, Sterling. Um, what was your kind of takeaways from the game? Obviously, it's not over yet, but your takeaways from the game and what were your expectations leading into the game? Yeah, man. Uh, obviously, like a lot of people, I feel like I thought it was going to be close, uh, regardless of who you pick. Um, I had uh, I had Florida State winning this game. But, um, yeah, it's like I figured it would be a lot closer of a game. Now, obviously, it's week one. Um, in the first half, I think you saw a lot of – I don't want to call it jitters, um, but I think people just – you know, you're getting used to this the first week of the season. Uh, There's a lot of drop balls from receivers that you're not expecting to see drop balls from. You had Wilson with two. And there was another critical third down drop in the first half. But, um, I mean, they just ran away with it. Like, honestly, it was a tale of two halves. You know, I think the quarterbacks were kind of struggling in the beginning um Travis had some very questionable throws uh that interception on like it was like a screen um yes. that was really bad that was really bad and then there was another one where he just tossed it up in the air um, like on his own, own, goal, own goal line yeah right? yeah bro and I'm like and it, 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 he's lucky it didn't get picked off but uh, it could have been a lot worse um he also had the uh the fumbles which is crazy we we're talking about a previous game I believe it was um where neighbors had fumbled the, the kickoff or a punt twice I believe it was yeah. twice yeah crazy and then when it happened again so yeah it was tell it to have they came out and dominated the second half really um they just kind of figured it out um great teams do that at halftime but uh yeah they, they they looking good bro yeah and um it does make me concerned obviously as you guys can see behind me um those of you guys have been here for a while i'm a clemson fan so i am concerned for this matchup on in um, september 23rd week four um no, or florida state coming to death valley uh that game looks very scary now um given how good Keon Coleman looked, Jordan Travis with five touchdowns. They held LSU's high-powered offense to zero points in the second half. Obviously, there's still two minutes left. Um, Florida State does have the ball, though, so it's looking like it's going to be a shutout in the second half. Um, to put up, what, 24 unanswered points in the second half, to make those second-half adjustments, um, Norvell just looked like the better coach today. Florida State just looked like the better overall team, and this is what I have been preaching the last two and a half months during the previous series. Had so many LSU fans bashing my takes, saying that I don't know how to break down a game. I don't know how to break down teams because it just seems like I'm biased. No, there's a difference between what you see on paper. I think LSU has better talent on paper, but it still has to mesh. I think Florida State is a better put together team. I mean, I think it, it showed today. Obviously, you got Jared Verse at defensive end, who's going to be a top 10 or 15 pick in the draft. Uh, maybe even a little bit higher than that. Then you have Jordan Travis, who really this could be his Heisman type moment. Um, he beat a top five team. Yeah. I expect Florida State to jump into the top five after this game. Um, a lot of the other teams did not look very good this uh, this week. Um, OSU did not look good against Indiana. Florida State just beat um, arguably either the the second or third best team in the SEC, depending on um, how you want to view it, um, by by three touchdowns. So I think uh, Florida State needs a little bit more credit. Obviously, they've they've had the the bashing um, of their program the last couple of years. And um, I've been on record saying we don't know what Florida State's going to be because of the one ten win season they had in the last five to six seasons. Um, but they kind of made their mark. They just scored another touchdown as we speak. Um, it is 44 to 17 right now. Um, um, who, was it? Who, who scored? Um, I'm not sure, but it is no. 44 to 17. Um, an absolute domination. Uh, Jaheim Bell, another touchdown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So LSU fans, you guys are going to have to answer in the comment section. Um, I know a lot of you guys are going to run away and not respond anymore. Um, I had this game a lot closer than it ended up being, um, but Florida State looked dominant. Um, and to be completely honest, if we're gonna if we're gonna be honest right now, this this could be a hot take. As of right now, Florida State is probably a top three team in college football right now, based on what we've seen. They have the best win so far. Um, obviously it's week one, but they look dominant in doing so. Thirty one points in the second half. Um, this is this is a dominant performance by them, and I and I hate Florida State. Sterling knows I hate Florida State. Um, yes. All of my close friends know I hate Florida State. Um, but you got to give credit where it's due. Uh, they beat a playoff contender by 38 points or however many points this is, 28 points um, in week one in a neutral site. Obviously, it's in Orlando, but it's still a neutral site nonetheless. 
um, but it's very impressive. Um, and what would you say is the biggest um, kind of surprise factor for you with Florida State in this game? I, obviously, like watching the game, what surprised you most? I think, honestly, to me, um, I think it was just that Jordan Travis just went as crazy as he did in the second half. Not that I don't think he's capable of doing what he did. Um, I think what we saw across the board this week uh, was a lot of quarterbacks just going crazy. Like, I feel like after every game, it was like, hey, Heisman candidate. Uh, they even even DJ after today, like, hey, he, yeah. he might be up for it. Um, and it's like rightfully so. Like, everybody kind of went crazy. But like I said, the way that LSU defense played in that first half, like, I don't think anything shocked uh, aside from the end result of the game. Um, like I said, I have Florida State winning, but not by this margin. I, I don't remember what, what I put the score. I think I had them. I think it was like during the live show, we all had it within a touchdown. Yeah. Um, we I, I all had it within had a touchdown like for sure. Four or three points, though. Like it was yeah. like four or three points. But um, yeah, I, I didn't really get to watch the second half. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was in a league game in uh in Madden, first one. But um, yeah, he was sparking up, and I think it was big. It's obviously um big ups to the receivers, you know. Keon Coleman went crazy, Johnny Wilson, like I said. And he he had a hat trick. Oh my gosh! I think I turned it on. And he had he had got his third, and I was like, "Yeah, this is bad. We might as well yeah. just go ahead and, and start this, bro." But my yeah, dad, uh, my dad has been vocal on the channel saying that he thinks that um, this could be one of the best receiving cores in college football. Um, obviously, they have the two headed monster and Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson, uh, two of the biggest receivers in college football tandems wise. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then you bring in Jaheim Bell, obviously the transfer from South Carolina, big tight end. Uh, a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown today. So this offense looks scary, man. Trey Benson really didn't get on, didn't do much on the ground. 12 carries for 47 yards. I think that's going to change um, throughout the season. Um, their defense looked amazing, though. Um, obviously, Jane Daniels threw for 350 yards and he ran for another 60. So he still had about 400 yards total. Um, but to hold them, like I said, um, oh, LSU just scored. So it's 45 24. To hold them to um, seven points in the second half now, now seven, um, is, is crazy. The defense looked really good. Um, a lot of talks. I mean, I don't know how, what the line was. Um, I'm pretty sure LSU was the favorite coming into this game. Two, they, I think. I think they were, they were favorite. Two favorite? Two. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So, just the way that Florida State kind of put the pressure on them, um, <clears throat> defensively, verse, um, and all those guys in the back end as well. Secondary looked really good. They had really, uh, they had a lot of confidence in Frentro Cypress. I'm not sure if I said his name right. The transfer out of Virginia had him one on one Malik Neighbors early in the or late in the first half, um, and they threw his way twice, and he shut him down both times. So this team is scary, man. And again, as a Clemson fan, I am very concerned coming, um, you know, in three weeks. Obviously, we play tomorrow against Duke. So we'll be able to find out a little bit more about them. And we're going to be doing a recap um, of that game as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they, this team looked really good. Um, and again, I hate Florida State. I wish they went 0-12. Um, I hate them so much. But I, I do. I did think they were going to win this game. And I do have to give credit where it is due. Um, they look dominant today. And I would not be surprised if they are. If they jump um, a good number of teams in the next AP poll that comes out on Tuesday, they deserve to be in the top five. They're obviously yeah. eight now. Um, no other top, you know, seven teams lost other than LSU. So I'm concerned or I'm kind of curious to see how they um, shuffle those teams around. But a lot of teams did not look good in the top seven. Um, so we'll just have to see. But did you kind of have anything closing uh, to say about this game? Anything you're looking forward to with either of these teams heading out to the season? Obviously, LSU coming off of a loss, but... Yeah, no, I think I want to see, obviously, how LSU bounces back. Um, I honestly, like, as a Notre Dame fan, as a building my Notre Dame fandom, hey, I'm not a I'm not a Michael, whatever his, his name is, bro, in the chat. Like, I'm not going to be wilding like that. Um, you're going to have rational takes for me, if anything. But um, honestly, um, I still find it, like, fun to see uh, FSU be good, bro. Like, them not being good over the last two years, I don't know what it is just about, about Florida State being good. It's just, like, Obviously them, LSU, um, obviously Alabama, but they've been good. It's just the teams that are like staples to college football that are like historically good teams. It's kind of like in the NFL, like when the Cowboys are good or the Raiders are good, like football is just fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them just hold it, upholding that and just seeing how they do in the ACC. Um, I think them being three – in the uh in the polls um i think that's i think that's fair i think they earned it obviously like you said it was the best win of the weekend uh dominant the game just ended right now i believe 45 um, 24 final yeah they just look good man everything down to the to even the uniforms i don't know if they just did that this year but they got rid of the they finally got rid of the big tribal uh a little tribal oh, on the i didn't even pay attention to it 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I know there's weird stuff like that. They kind of look like Boston College, but um, I don't know. Somebody let me know if that if that's something they just did this year or if that uh, if they did that last year. I thought it looked kind of clean, but um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do going forward, man. I think I think they're gonna be a big contender, um, especially in the playoffs this year. Definitely. I mean, it's gonna come down to that Clemson Florida State game. Looking yep. forward to that one on September 23rd. Um, but as always, thank you guys so much for sticking around for this long. If you are new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Join the Discord. The link is in the description below. Um, the pick is also down there. You guys are a little bit late if you haven't joined it yet. There's 35 people in there. Uh, the leading person in the pick right now after week one is a guy named Pablo. I'm not sure. I, I haven't seen him around here too much, but he was 9-1 and one after the first week. Um, so he is. He only got one incorrect game on the pick So he is leading it so far uh, for the, the jersey of his choice at the end of the year. So that's always fun. Uh, stick around for us tomorrow. We're going to be recapping the Clemson Duke game. Uh, but until then, peace out, y'all.